this video was definitely not sponsored by BetterHelp, so you should definitely subscribe. You guys really like these videos and I really like making them, so here we go again. If you're new here and if you want to have your question answered, leave it in the comments below. Seeker Seraphim masks. Just out of curiosity, do you ever watch anime or use sites like 4chan? Also, I noticed that my second question about Western philosophy's usefulness was not answered. He essentially asked if it was useful to learn about Western philosophy, including modern philosophers like Nietzsche. I watched only a handful of anime, most notably Death Note and Berserk. You probably don't want to let your kids watch the other one. Anyway, I have never been to 4chan longer than 2 minutes. I get confused by the layout. As regards to the second question, on the usefulness of the Western philosophy, to be quite honest, I don't know. I'm not much of a philosophy buff. At the insisting of a friend, I have read Das Pig Zarathustra by Nietzsche and... I don't remember any of it. Maybe I'm just stupid, who knows. I think it really depends from philosopher to philosopher. I try to avoid blanket answers, such as philosophy is outdated, or western philosophy is bad, and so on. What I wish I could play asks, is Urosh the Force a saint? I have read some conflicting information. Well, he's not a saint in the Serbian Orthodox Church, he had a certain cult, but nothing came out of it. The reasons usually given for him not being canonized, as opposed to every other member of the Nemanjic dynasty are, first, he made the Serbian church into a patriarchate, which caused a long-lasting schism with the Church of Constantinople, second, he was a conqueror, third, he blinded and most probably killed his own father, and fourth, he opted to be buried in a mausoleum, as opposed in a monastery like his ancestors. Mother Mim asks, what is your opinion on Quakerism? I don't have any special opinions of them. They're your typical let's suppose the state denomination, for better or worse. However, I must admit I just love their aesthetics, the best of beautiful simplicity. John Burnham asks, will you be doing a presentation on the differences in ecclesiology between Roman Catholicism and Orthodoxy? After this question was asked, I posted a video on differences between Orthodoxy and Catholicism. I probably won't make a specific video regarding Catholic ecclesiology, and if I do, it will be most probably on papacy, but the odds are that I won't do it in the foreseeable future. Paul Kasky asks, do you draw on digital tablet or do you use paper? I draw everything by hand and then I scan it. Of course, I adjust brightness and contrast, so that the scanned image would look like the real-life illustration. Naturally, I try to remove little smudges and little mistakes here or there. Onik Dova asks, Hey Boyan, why do we use icons for prayer in the All to Holy Orthodox Church? And is it true that Luke the Apostle painted the first icons? Because I heard people claim that he didn't, and also claim that his gospel wasn't even written by him. Also, don't forget to read everything written in caps lock with a very angelic voice. Well, too late for that. Anyway, first, why do we use icons? They're simply very handy. They help you focus your prayer, they're witnesses to the incarnation, for if God wasn't made flesh, we couldn't depict him, and, well, this is something that isn't as relevant as before, it helps illiterate people glimpse into the history of salvation. Now, did Saint Luke paint the first icons? I would say no. The Seventh Ecumenical Council, that ultimately gave the seal of approval to the usage of icons within worship, never quoted that tradition. The earliest church father that they quoted was from the 4th century. And trust me, they would use the Luke argument if they were aware of it. It is similar to the discussion regarding the purgatory and the toll houses with the Catholics. If St. Mark of Ephesus considered the toll houses a veritable tradition, he would have used it against the Latins. Sometimes, the councils give great commentary, not only by what they say, but also what they omit to say. Was the Gospel of Luke written by Luke? Now, that is an ancient tradition, and you'll always find people who question the authorship. Even if it wasn't written by Luke specifically, it still fits with the other three canonical Gospels, and the events described there are quoted by the early Church Fathers, so you have no worries there. Marcel Wey asks, what are your thoughts about Patriarch Bartholomew and his new heretical decisions? Talk about a loaded question. If by heretical decisions you mean his ecumenism and all that, I'll reference it in the future video regarding ecumenism. However, I'm very, very opposed to calling bishops heretics. Like all Christians, I'm no fan of bishops. But trust me on this. A person calling a bishop a heretic is literally jumping into a schism and sometimes a heresy. Stop worrying if a bishop is a heretic, that is for other bishops to decide, not you. Orthodox Slav asks, 
Do you own a Lestovka? Do you pray the Lestovka? And what do you think of the Lestovka? P.S. I just really wanted you to draw a Lestovka. No? No? And eh. I've never had one, and I had the opportunity of obtaining one at Belgrade Book Fair. But I just prefer the feel of knots and beads under my fingers. I do think that Lestovkas have a far greater beauty potential than prayer robes. But then again... But then again... Pencils and Lestovkas doesn't have the ring of pencils and prayer robes. Also, here's the drawing. Link to the drawing in full resolution is in the description. Slikovita Stvarnost asked me a bunch of questions and let me pick one. So, if you'd like me to answer the reminder of them, please be so kind to ask them again in the comments. She asks, assuming you're a she, Did you ever consider painting icons? You seem to be doing well for now. This is something I get asked a lot. Now, a couple of days ago, the answer would have been no. I simply don't have time. I have a day job, the YouTube channel, the wider Bible Illustrated drawings I have to do, and if I find some extra time, it'll be spent on some physical activity that is way overdue, as you can clearly see from my illustrated avatar. However, the chapel I attend will host some iconography and calligraphy classes, and I'll most probably attend. We'll see how it goes, but if you see some major improvement in my artwork, that is due to the classes. Lusha Kvasnikov asks, when will you illustrate the books of Ruth, Esther and Judith? I have no idea. There are multiple factors influencing what I draw, including if I have a good idea regarding a drawing, if some patron chooses a drawing from a particular book. At the moment, I have a patron who has commissioned a bunch of drawings from the Book of Judges. Also, I'm not a fan of historical books, so those get the last spot. I generally give preference to chapters I've already begun, so I could post the entire chapters here on the channel. However, since the Book of Ruth is relatively short, I will start doing it way ahead of some longer books. Losha Kvasnikov also asks, Does it matter what gender a person is if they want to become a reader? I only just converted to Russian Orthodoxy two years ago from non-denominational. Welcome to the Orthodox Church, Losha. Well, this is an interesting question. Technically, a woman can perform a function of a reader. This is especially true of female monasteries, but I've seen lay women read the epistles in parish churches. However, can a woman be ordained as a reader? Considering the current tonsure prayer, which says that the rank of a reader is a first degree of priesthood, and that the reader should strive for higher degrees, I would say that a woman cannot be tonsured a reader, at least with the current prayer. I'd also like to add here that while deaconesses are very well attested in early Christianity, I don't think I've ever heard of female readers. Kebab Destroyer asks, Can you explain what is happening between the Ecumenical Patriarchate and Moscow Patriarchate? and why the Ukrainian church should not be or should be given autocephaly. Also, what are your stances? We all know that influential YouTubers get to have their say in these complicated church matters. Okay, joking aside. I cannot explain what is happening between the two patriarchates. Do you know when everyone is watching a certain show and you don't want to watch it out of spite, but a couple of years later everyone is still talking about it, but it is 26th season by now and it is too late for you to jump the bandwagon? It is like that with me. I did read that the Ecumenical Patriarch said that there can be no orthodoxy without the Ecumenical Patriarchate. <laughs> That's very wrong, kiddo. But other than that, just pray for the schism to end. That is the most important thing we can do. And in the absolute majority of cases, it is the only thing you can do. Well, that's it for the current episode. Again, if you'd like me to answer your question, leave it in the comments below. If it's something super personal, you're better off asking your parish priest, psychologist, psychiatrist, exorcist, and or mortician. Remember to subscribe, because it is my only form of nutrition. Bye!